Goldsmith, and in this clip from my Comedians Comedian podcast, I'm talking to Fern Brady, one of my absolute favourite acts, and someone who I know full well hates when I say that. We'll talk about the subtle art of giving a fuck, and the less subtle art of not giving a fuck, and how she talks about her own life and minds her own experiences for comedy. You can listen to the full episode at ComediansComedian.com, or explore the rest of this channel to hear other short clips. But there's a definite type of person coming to my shows, which okay. is really, I find really interesting. So, like a lot of female comedians, like Louisa, will get a lot of girls and gay guys, I think, at her gigs. I get guys with beards who are into wrestling and computer games. <laughs> it's so strange. It's just, And uh, the girls that like me are very intense goth girls. Um <laughs> So it's been really cool having the same people come back to my show this year. And my boyfriend was looking at my Twitter followers and he was like, wrestling, has a beard. Wrestling, <laughs> works with computer games. <laughs> and do you know why that is? Do you know why that, that demographic is excited about you? Yeah, I think they like those men, like women, where they get the feeling of fear confused with the feeling of love because I'm quite aggressive on stage. I think that appeals to them. But it, it's been so consistent the last couple of years that's you, the people coming but to But you're kind of getting, you're suggesting that you get kind of submissive people yeah, because yeah. you're so you're so dominant on stage yeah very uh, the men are submissive and the girls that like me are quite intense uh girls sort of quite intense crazy girls so maybe they see something in me that's like a kindred spirit or something <laughs> um i tell you what i'm excited about you as a comedian is that and i'm, I'm sure this is part of your not that my opinion means anything. I'm just saying it's like uh, what, no, I, what I'm, I'm reading from starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> what what I'm kind of reading from the outside. You don't give a fuck, and it's so refreshing. I Is that think, not true? Do no, not think I don't think that's true at all. I just um, a lot of people will say that I'm really honest, but I don't mean to be. And like I'm not very diplomatic, but I would like to be. I've been trying to practice that more. Because I remember Gav Webster saying to me early on, you have to just not give a shit about anything, but it takes ages to get like that. But it actually was only from doing solo shows and also living in London helped a lot. Because I started off in Manchester and um, it's a smaller circuit and I just really cared what other people thought about me. And then in London, it's so massive it's a lot easier to just not care. I get what you're saying. I'll, I'll ex just explain a bit more about what I... Yeah. I don't mean ex explain. <laughs> like, that's no, 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 it's fine. But let me talk around the subject a bit more. Um, you are one of those comics who is very happy talking about the actual reality of your life. Like a lot of comics, I think, talk about their lives, but they sort of isolate the nature of being a comedian, the nature of the industry, their likelihood of getting reviews, TV, stuff like that. They, they kind of, they don't talk about the real stuff. Yeah. You know I mean? It's like people talk about their real lives as it pertains to camping or a oh, story yeah. about a wedding or, you know, so there's different, yeah. there's all, I guess there's a spectrum of how much of it you, how much of the nitty gritty you get into. One of the kind of uh, through lines of, of the show Male Comedian was about you not getting invited to oh, the so female comedian's it? brunch. Yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. see the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so my, so my solo show was about why I wasn't invited to this brunch because I was really upset about I it. I remember seeing on Facebook how upset you were. The people who organised the brunch weren't happy about it, right? Because it's a real brunch. Sure. Uh, but I've had other female comedians get in touch and say, I don't get invited to that brunch. So it's a very, this is a hot topic amongst <laughs> female comedians <laughs> who gets invited to the brunch or not. But I just thought it, it'd be funny to do a show about the feeling of being left out. Because initially I was like, I basically thought, what if I do the show about this? And people are like, what the fuck is she talking about? Like, I'm not being invited to a brunch. But then I was like... I think the show did well because people empathise with the feeling of being left out. Yes, I, I definitely think that's true. And I think one of the, like a really interesting thing you talk about in a very funny way, but like the subject is interesting and I've never heard any other comics talk about it, is when you do material about your inability to make friends with women. Or not your yeah, inability, you know, yeah. the difficulties you have. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not singing that off, your absolute inability. No. But <laughs> yeah. as, as you described, the problems you have making friends with women. Mm. I'm like, I've never heard another comic talk about that. Yeah. And that's like, that's a really kind of uh, honest 
and sort of new seeming element of your life. Yeah. And I think that's a really good choice to talk about that. So talk to me about the the decisions you make regarding what stuff you want to talk about. Well, um, I remember a reviewer said my, my first show was more about what I wasn't than what I was. And at the time I was annoyed, but now I agree with them because my show this year was a lot more honest because I do find it it's just that I'm quite socially awkward and I get quite uh, nervous around girls like that Russell Howard thing Bridget Christie asked if I wanted to go and see Jenna Friedman the next day and I got so nervous I like didn't reply <laughs> initially <laughs> so I just do things like that your difficulties forming friendships with women is obviously like a true part of your yeah. life and we can talk about that but I was also asking about the the decision to put that stuff in the show as opposed to like you know you've you've got more I feel like you've got more kind of accessible clubby stuff like you've got stuff about your yeah. face and your eyes you've got stuff yeah. about tall you know it, like tall and oh, short my boyfriend, the tall the tall and small thing yeah. you know um but you also kind of like that might be like the first 20 first half yeah. of the show you also get into some really interesting topics well the way I wrote the show this year was because when I think about what cr critics are going to say or what comedians are going to say, my brain shuts down and I can't write. So um, the way I, the only way I managed to write my show was by trying to second guess what other people were going to think. Like I did a big, there was loads of stuff about how I used to be a stripper in my show this year. And that was like, uh, like I'm actually hyperventilating. <laughs> it. Basically, that was like a nightmare to preview because I would get... I was so worried what people were going to think about me or say about me when... Because I didn't tell anyone what, for years when I was doing comedy, because why would you? I basically just had to put out of my mind what anyone was going to say about that. And then, then it turned out people were saying, oh, the stripping stuff was the most interesting. And I was like, yeah, but it's not got enough punchlines in it. I don't like doing serious bits in a show. I didn't want to do a bit about stripping where I was like, and in the end isn't stripping empowering to women <laughs> like i didn't want to have a serious conclusion but i think you you find serious stuff you find, like one of the things you talk about is that you were never the victim of abuse but one yeah. of the, like the reality of the situation is the woman that said the most bimbo thing would be made to dress as a tiny pumpkin yeah yeah you know what i mean that's like a, and, i have so many weird stories from stripping <laughs> and, and i'm hoping to get it into the american recording of the show because, but it's so hard to practice that material at new material nights because you can't really do it in a 10 minute set. So if anyone has any advice on how to do that, please tweet me. <laughs> um, what, what, what are the, what, how do you mean, what are the difficulties that you're So facing? I can't, I don't feel I can go and do a 10 minute set about how I was a stripper somewhere because I found it so difficult to preview. Why? What was difficult about it? Because I thought people were glaring at me from the audience, but they weren't like it was all imagined i think there is a really fascinating quality that you have whereby you are fearless and petrified at the same time yeah Do you yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah like lo loads of people say that i look calm on stage but i think it's just because i've got quite a blank facial expression because <laughs> i'm not i get like in the, when i started comedy i would shout a lot on stage but it was just nerves but uh, the, see, when I was trying to preview the stripping material, I did a preview with Richard Gadd and there were loads of good comedians at it, like Finn Taylor and Matt Younes and Finn's girlfriend, Phoebe, who works in comedy. And then, and Gadd's really hot sister was there and I started to think she was glaring at me. So I was like, well, you're all obviously here to see Richard Gadd, so I'm going to leave now. So there was a lot loads and loads of previews are just flipped out and it was only once I did the show um did about 10 shows at the fringe that I managed to get that stripping material right but, okay but um there was a day where I got like I got a five star review early on at the fringe and the day I got a five star review I like phoned I did the review hadn't come out this was the day the reviewer was in I thought the show was terrible it was, it was a bad show 
and I phoned my boyfriend and I was like crying in a cafe saying I had to go home. And I, so it, do, it doesn't really make sense that the days, the, the worst days of the show were the days it got good reviews. And then Jay Richardson was in on a good day again and I got three stars off him again. So I've stopped reading reviews. <laughs> yeah, I, probably, I didn't, probably wise. I used to think how do comedians not read their reviews? Like Carol Donnelly doesn't read his reviews, but I didn't have any prob. I still haven't read my reviews from this year. Yeah. I haven't. And there's one, one or two of them kind of got sent to me. Um, but I find it hugely, and I've said this on the show before, and I really enjoy saying it, and I want everyone to do the same thing. They're not for us. Don't yeah. read them. Isn't it brilliant when you don't read them? Because then you're just a person a doing your job, being creative. You, mm. You've got your career. It's great. You don't need to worry about what individuals think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've got an awareness of what they were, but it's yeah, it's so, it was so much better not reading them. For tour dates, news, updates, whatever they are, and the latest episodes of the Comedians Comedian podcast, go to stuartgoldsmith.com.